Howdy folks, this is the beginning of the training. Let's get this show on the road. The only thing you've seen me, you haven't seen me do is I've installed EasyOS Rec Experts. This is just a program I like to screen record with. Uh, EasyOS has a bunch of stuff on their site. We're gonna come over, cover some other EasyOS products. Uh, they're not sponsored. They're not part of this program, just like Windows is not part of this. I'm not sponsored by Microsoft. I'm not sponsored by, you know, all sorts of things that you might see here. Uh, I am sponsored by some stuff. So when those are those sponsorships come up, I will make sure that you are. It is clearly communicated that I either use the product or I am sponsored in some way, shape or form. So let's talk about getting your machine prepped. So we set this up on camera on that kind of video zero talking about doing this giveaway and talk about doing this training. But let's talk about where we go for the next steps. This was me checking that my media worked. Um, a great website to get your computer started is a website called Ninite.com. Ninite.com has a bunch of tools and resources you can use to configure your computer. So we're just gonna go with uh, Firefox and Chrome. Those are the common ones. We're gonna go with some 7-zip. Uh, there's a bunch of programs in here if you are not an IT person. Uh, you might really care about them. We're going to go over a lot of this stuff. Um, we're not going to cover a bunch of the me messaging apps. We're not going to cover a lot of things. Uh, screenshot might be useful. Uh, InfraView might be useful. Foxit Reader might be useful. There's a bunch of, bunch of different PDF viewers. Uh, we're not going to install any of these. Um, and we're probably not going to install Winterstat. We, need, we definitely need that. Um, Net++, plus plus, this is also great. Um, we'll talk about PuTTY and WinSCP eventually, but we're just going to leave those where they are. So here we go. We click. I've selected all of these tools. I then click Get Your Ninite. It will give me a single downloadable with all five of those tools. I'll hit Open, and then it will prepare that setup, and it will start to install them. And we're just going to watch it go through this install. Nothing really fancy here. You're seeing it download, you're seeing it install, you're seeing it do the thing, and we will either get a uh, Dragon Cyber AI background. Uh, we're going to pick the, uh, the AI moniker here uh, because most likely that's not a copyrighted image. Uh, this is, eh, eh, right? Let's see, uh, digital AI art. We'll use you. You can be our um, save images. Uh, da, 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 da. Downloads, downloads. Great. All right, cool. Oh, that's not a file we want. Yeah. Background art for AI. Great. Yep, that sounds wonderful. We'll pick something like you. You'll be a great wallpaper. Save image as a WebP file. Great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we won't get to do any of that. Anyway, we've got all of our tools here installed. Let's see if we can get a, a semi-decent wallpaper going uh, here. In a minute, close. We got some downloads. We got this WebP file. Installing a bunch of stuff. Let's open up Chrome. Chrome's going to ask us to import a bunch of settings. Uh, don't sign in. Skip. Uh, and got it. Okay, great. So we got all those things. Can view this file here. Great. Can save as uh, image. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're going to just personalize and see if we can make this our wallpaper. Uh, background and a picture choose photo browse can we do WP no but this does this file work no this file doesn't work either well that's a shame browse photos close 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 okay so we've got the uh, the magical neon Pringle chips here We'll change that to something more characteristic in the future, but I just wanted to get it off the default background. So we've got some stuff going. 
And the most important thing, this is the most important lesson you're going to need to know about doing IT support, doing anything involving remote support. You're going to be doing uh, remote support for all sorts of people. You see, I'm putting a, I'm pulling command prompt up and I'm looking at the start and taskbar. So this is to prepare you. You are not an IT professional yet. You need to learn what things are. You need to learn how things work. And the most important thing you need to know, what well, being a remote technician, it doesn't matter if you are a senior AWS developer. It doesn't matter if you are a tier one, tier two, tier three cybersecurity. It doesn't matter what you are. You are going to need to know how to communicate to people and tell them or ask them what the host name of a computer is. In this case, my computer name is randomly generated by Windows. Windows does this. Sometimes you'll see Windows dash a bunch of characters. The, this is, these are randomized. Maybe you'll see desktop dash a bunch of characters. Maybe you'll see laptop dash a bunch of characters. But there's a lot of different ways to go about getting that. We're gonna pull PowerShell up and we're gonna do the same thing here, host name. You can see that we can get it in, this, in both command prompt and PowerShell. What is the difference? Command prompt's been around for a long time. PowerShell is much newer. PowerShell's kind of been around for quite a while too. Both of these are gonna be useful. You're gonna to have to learn them both. Uh, everything's gonna have command prompt. Not everything will have PowerShell. Maybe PowerShell will be locked down. There's different versions of PowerShell. These are both something you'll, that are called shells or command line interfaces. The CLI is something that's typically reserved for uh, command line interface, uh, which is called CLI. It's typically reserved for routers or firewalls. Uh, they're all over the place. You might log into a switch. You might log into a bunch of stuff with a command line interface, but uh, you're going to need to get used to seeing and typing things like this. So uh, how did I get to command prompt? I went down to my search bar and I typed CMD and then command prompt came up. Sometimes you're going to have to run command prompt as administrator. In this case, I, I selected that and then I right clicked on it and said pin to taskbar and pin to start. So that when I click start, you'll see that it would be in this list if I list all apps. This is where terminal uh, also, terminal is kind of the, what it's called in Linux land. Here terminal means PowerShell. Um, there's a lot of different kinds of shells. We can get into shell conversations. We'll talk about Linux. We'll talk about all sorts of stuff later. Uh, one, some of the other ways that you can get a hold of that host name, you're going to go to right click on the, whatever your Windows icon is, whether it's Windows 10, Windows 11, and you're going to click system. And system is then going to show you that up here. Uh, there is a info command. You can get people to type. Uh, you literally just type info and hit enter, and then you're going to have that up here under system name. So system name is going to be referred as well as host name, system name, uh, computer name. You're going to see this referred to all over the place, and you're just going to need to understand that people are going to use interchangeable terms for computers. I have had people call a computer a hard drive. I've had people call a computer a desktop. I have had people call a computer a monitor. It, people will mislabel it because they don't understand what's inside it, and that's totally okay. That's not their job, that's your job. You need to understand what that's doing. You need to understand the ins and outs of these things. And this is the most important part, host name. It doesn't matter how advanced you get. You're gonna say to somebody, can you please tell me what the host name of your computer is? whether you're remoting into that computer, whether that's a machine that people are looking for in cybersecurity logs, needing to push software to, needing to run a script, needing to reboot, what server am I connecting to? This is gonna be a question that gets asked by you to people over and over again. And you need to know the different ways that you can get to it because you need to be able to walk people on the phone to finding this information. This is so critical, it's so important, and it's so overlooked that this is the start 
of so many things. So we've got a bunch of programs installed. We've gone through our first lesson. What is a host name? What is a computer name? These are variables, by the way, and a variable is something that can change. So we can change the computer name. We can rename this if we want to. We can do all sorts of things that change these and we can have it go from a Windows this to what, or, and we can give it the description. We're not gonna do any of that. That's, this is fine for us. We're not going into some super advanced stuff. This is the start of the journey. Thank you all so much. Talk to you soon on the next video.